Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Coinly, the cryptocurrency tax software, to help you calculate your capital gains for filing your crypto taxes. So let's get started. All right, so I'm here on the Coinly homepage. I'm going to show you how to get Coinly set up and connected to your exchanges and your wallets so that it can help you calculate all of your capital gains and or losses so that you can file your taxes. Now, before I jump into it too far, I'm going to let you know that you are going to be sharing personal information with the Coinly service. There's really no way around this. You'll also be sharing your wallet addresses with Coinly. Now, if you're averse to doing that, then I'm afraid your only alternative for filing taxes would be to manually calculate all of your capital gains and losses be across all of your exchanges and wallets. And this can be quite a daunting task. So if you want to do your taxes and you want to do them safely and securely, Coinly is a great solution. Now, uh, I'm going to walk you through the process where the first thing we'll do is connect our exchanges now, uh, the reason we do this is so that Coinly will have access to our trading history. Some exchanges are easier than others. Some exchanges are a little more complicated. I'm going to show you how it works, and then uh, I'll walk you through some of the most uh, popular cryptocurrency exchanges. Also, we're going to need to connect our wallets. Now, the reason that we connect Coinly to all of our cryptocurrency wallets is so that transfers to and from our wallets are not counted as sales or purchases. If the only thing that we connect to our Coinly service are the cryptocurrency exchanges that we use, there's not a full tax picture of what's going on. Uh, so when we transfer crypto from an exchange for safe storage in our own wallets, that is not a taxable event. It's not taxable when we transfer cryptocurrency that we own from one place to another. So we need to include all of our wallet information so that those transfers do not get counted as sales. So I'll show you how to connect some of the more popular wallets to the Coinly service as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we'll do when we uh, get on this homepage is click Calculate My Taxes. They're going to invite you to uh, create a Coinly account. Now, uh, there's an easy way to do this, and that is through Coinbase. So if you sign into your Coinbase account through Coinly, you will have access to your Coinbase account. And that's a really easy way to sync up all of your Coinbase transactions. Now, if you don't have a Coinbase account, then you can go ahead and put in your name and email and a password and create an account that way. But since I have a Coinbase account, I'll demonstrate that method. Basically, all we do is click Continue with Coinbase, and it's going to prompt you to sign in to your Coinbase account, right? And once you get signed into your Coinbase account, it'll take you right back to Coinly, and then you'll be ready to get started syncing up your wallets. I find this a very uh, easy method of getting going. And then notice, too, that the account information has whatever email you're using to sign in to your Coinbase account. All right. So quick and easy way to get an account set up. All right. So the first thing we'll do is connect our Coinbase account, one of the easiest ones. We'll hit Start here. And as you can see, they have a list of all the top exchanges. They even have some filters here. Uh, for other things besides exchanges. So once we get a couple of our exchanges connected, uh, we'll move on to some of our wallets, right? So you can click wallets and see the top uh, cryptocurrency non-custodial wallets out there, like MetaMask, Ledger, Electrum Bitcoin Wallet, Kepler. So there's a lot of options here. We'll start with the exchanges. We'll start with Coinbase. And so we'll just turn on AutoSync and then we'll click Continue to Coinbase. Now, keep in mind, we are giving Coinly access to our cryptocurrency exchange accounts, but only uh, read access, right? They were not granting them access to make trades, uh, withdraw crypto, or do any of that kind of crazy stuff, right? We're just giving them access to uh, read the data so that they can download all of our 
transactions so that they'll have a transaction history. And that will allow them to calculate all of the capital gains on all of our trades. We'll go ahead and click continue to Coinbase. All right, we're basically setting up an API. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate that here in a minute, uh, manual uh, API. But with Coinbase, it's automatic, right? All you have to do is authorize it. You'll connect to your Coinbase account. The API will be set up that allows Coinly to download your transaction history. All right, so we'll hit authorize here. All right, and I just got an email alert from Coinbase telling me that I've allowed access to a third party. So, and I know that I have, so there's no reason to panic on that. We'll just let this sync up until uh, our balance on Coinbase is uh, showing in our Coinly interface. All right, then uh, now that it's been fully synced, uh, it tells you that the portfolio has been updated. All right, we can get rid of this. Uh, it says zero here, but if we just go into it, it'll uh, show all of the transactions. We can back out. Now you can see that it's fully updated with all of the transactions. Now, uh, if we go here to Coinbase, you can see a breakdown. There's the total transactions, uh, the deposits, the withdrawals, and the trades, right? So uh, at the moment, I don't have any coins in my Coinbase account, so my holding is very low. I generally keep my coins in my own wallet, right? So, but this is great because now I have all of the transaction history of my trades so that I can use those to calculate my capital gains, all right? Uh, that's the easy case. That's Coinbase. Let's move on to a slightly more complicated case, which would be... Um, Binance US. Uh, Binance US won't auto sync unless I set up an API. So when I click uh, set up auto sync, it asks me to uh, enter my API settings. And then they give you this link that gives you some detailed instructions on how you go about setting up an API. API is just a fancy word for a piece of software or a program that runs on your exchange and allows an interface with a third party. So in the case of my Binance US API, I want to set it up so Coinly has access to my transaction history, but no power to make trades or deposits or withdrawals or anything like that. So all we have to do to set that up uh, according to these instructions, is go over to our Binance US account. We'll go up here where uh, the profile information is and go to API management. We're going to create a new API. We'll label this one Co Coinly. And then we'll hit create. We'll need to put in our two factor authentication. And they're going to send us a confirmation email. All right. And we'll just confirm the creation of that API key. And that takes us back to our API interface. Notice here we've got a new API. Uh, and the title is Coinly. And it has a, an API key and a secret key. You'll notice also that this API that we just created only has the can read checked. The other two where it enables trading or, or withdrawals are not checked, right? We don't want to enable that kind of access for a Coinly service, right? It's just reading transaction history. If you're doing something more complicated like automatic trading and that sort of thing uh, using APIs, that would be a different story, right? We're not doing that here. We're just giving Coinly access to the history of our transactions. Now this secret key will only show when you first create this. So uh, don't navigate away from this page uh, until you have finished copying it over into your Coinly account. So the first thing we'll do is copy the API key. We'll go back over here and paste it in. And then we can go back and grab that secret key. We might just, you probably will just have to highlight it uh, and then right click and copy that into your clipboard. Go back over here to Coinly and just paste that in. All right, so now we've got the two API keys and uh, we can click secure import. 
Now, we have some choices here uh, about where we want to start our import. Uh, most cryptocurrency exchanges have their own rules about uh, the, the amount of uh, transactions or the, uh, the history uh, of transactions. Some will only give you uh, a few months. Some will uh, only give you a year. Others will uh, allow you to import multiple years worth of transaction. I'm just going to use beginning, and that should give me as much data as Binance US is willing to give me, right? I'm assuming most of you are doing your current taxes. It only needs to go back far enough to get the previous tax year's uh, transaction history. So once you import the data, you'll know, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and hit secure import. We can back out to the dashboard and then go to wallets. And you can see here that it's syncing up the Binance US, uh, but it's not complete yet. It says sync, but you need to give it some time uh, to fully sync up. All right, you get this little message that says that uh, the portfolio has been updated. We can dismiss this. And uh, let's go ahead and click into it. And there you can see that uh, this has been completely updated. Now, I have some... Uh, transactions that have no purchase history. Uh, and that's basically Coinly has uh, determined that there's no cost basis for these purchases. I'm aware of this because these were uh, some uh, rewards that came in. And I'm sure that I'll be able to fix that within Coinly at some point. Most of you should uh, just have deposits, trades and withdrawals, right? My history is a little more complicated. We can go back to our wallets and you can see there that uh, everything's been synced up and I have some imbalances, which I should be able to fix. All right, so that's Coinbase and that's Binance US. Binance US required the API. Uh, so depending on your uh, cryptocurrency exchanges, you may have to set up some APIs. So for example, if we add another wallet or exchange and uh, I add Kraken, I'll need to set up an API to sync up my Kraken account. Same, pretty much the same thing we did in uh, Binance US. Each cryptocurrency exchange has their own method. And if you just click this link here, it'll give you the specific instructions for the cryptocurrency exchange that you use. All right, now let's go ahead and set up one of our wallets, our cryptocurrency wallets. Now, uh, we can click here on wallet so that we get more specific list of uh, cryptocurrency self-custody wallets. I'll go ahead and do Ledger. Now, I have quite a few Ledger wallets, so uh, I'll show you how this works uh, with a few of my wallets, right? So we'll set up AutoSync. All right, so for Ethereum, we're going to click Connect uh, Blockchains, and we'll add... Uh, the Ethereum public address of the wallet. Uh, for Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dogecoin Dash, Litecoin, and uh, Bitcoin uh, Satoshi's version, or B BSV, we'll use the XPUB key. So I'll uh, start with the easy case of Ethereum. I'm going to go over to my Ledger Live. I'll go down to uh, the Accounts section. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with this Ethereum main account. Now, in order to get the public address, all I have to do is click Receive. And then I can get the uh, public address of the wallet. I'll copy that into my clipboard. Let's go back over to Coinly. We'll click Connect Blockchains. We choose our cryptocurrency. We'll choose Ethereum in this case and I'll just paste in the address of that wallet. I'll start from the beginning. So you have some fine control over uh, a wallet that's uh, a mining wallet or a reward wallet or something like that. Uh, we don't need to uh, choose this if it's simply uh, a storage wallet, right? We don't need to make any changes to this. We'll go ahead and click import and it should sync up on the blockchain and give you uh, all of the transaction history and current balance of that wallet. So if we go back, 
to done here. You can see there is the uh, address of that Ethereum wallet, and uh, it's still syncing, so there's no transaction history yet. And while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and add a Bitcoin wallet. We'll do the same process. We'll go to Wallets. We'll choose Ledger. Uh, we'll set up Auto Sync. And then uh, we're going to choose Bitcoin in this case. We'll click Connect Blockchains. We'll go to Bitcoin. We need the XPUB address for uh, a Ledger-based wallet. So if we go over to Ledger Live, we can go back to Accounts. All right, I can go to this Bitcoin account here. I'll click on it. And what I need to do to get that XPUB address is go to the uh, Settings up here where it says Edit Account. And then I'll need to pull this down where it says Advanced. Now, the XPUB address uh, is right here. This is a XML markup document. So uh, it uh, has the heading here and then the actual address. I don't want the quotes, so I'm just going to select everything within the quotation mark. All right, just eyeball it and make sure you got the entire address. We can copy that into our clipboard, and then we'll go back over here to Coinly, and we'll paste in that XPUB address, right? Uh, I'll do from the beginning, and uh, remember, uh, we don't need to alter this because that particular wallet is not is just a storage wallet, right? So I'll click Import, and that's going to get started. I can click on this check mark here, takes me back, and you can see here that uh, these two wallets are currently being synced up, right? We can go ahead and add one more, just so uh, we'll choose Ledger in this case. One more time. And this time I'll do another one where it's just uh, a non-Bitcoin wallet. Click on the Connect blockchain, find the coin in the list, enter the public address, and save. So let's go over here. Uh, we can dismiss this. And I'll go ahead and use uh, XRP. I'll click on this. I'll click Receive to get that public address. And I'll copy that into my clipboard. We'll go back over to Coinly. We'll choose Connect Blockchain. We'll uh, choose XRP. If you don't see it, you can search for it. All right. We'll click on XRP, and we'll paste in the public address of that wallet. All right, And then we just click Import. And now that wallet has been added to the list. Right. And as you notice, I have quite a few wallets and I have several exchanges. Um, so this would be a long process for me, but just be systematic about it. Uh, if you've got a lot of cryptos, just start at the top and work your way down. Right. Until you have all of the cryptos that you have in Ledger Live synced up to your Coinly account. If you have a third-party coin, like uh, perhaps uh, Cardano, and you're not managing it in Ledger Live, then you would just go to your third-party wallet and get that public address. Like, for example, Cardano, I would just do the same process. Hit Add Wallet and Exchange. Tell it I'm using my Ledger. Set up Auto Sync. Connect Blockchains. And then search for my uh, crypto, in this case, Cardano. Now I just need the public address. So in the case of Cardano, I'm using Adalite. So I would just go to Adalite and access my wallet like I normally do. I use my uh, hardware device. So I would just pull up that interface, connect my device. All right, and once I'm inside the wallet, I would uh, do receive and get a uh, receiving address, which I can copy into my clipboard and then take that back over to Coinly and paste in that public Cardano address and then choose import. All right, and I'll just do that for all of my cryptocurrencies that I want to track with Coinly. Like I said, it's very important to track 
your cryptocurrency wallets if you keep your cryptocurrency stored in your own wallets. Because once you purchase the crypto and put it in your own wallet, uh, you haven't really sold it, right? You just bought it and moved it. And that is non-taxable. So you want to make sure that if you're storing crypto in your own wallet, that, that it's obvious that you haven't sold it yet. You don't want that transfer to be counted as a sale, right? So it's very important that you link all of your cryptocurrency wallets up along with your exchanges. You want to get as much information in here as possible so that there's an accurate representation of all of your trades and transfers. And then once you have all of that done, you'll be able to generate a, an accurate tax report. All right, and I have a message down here that uh, my portfolio has been updated. I can dismiss this. I'll probably get a few more. Notice that the Bitcoin transactions have uh, updated. So uh, I have all the transactions in this wallet. Also, the Ethereum wallet is updated. So uh, we'll just wait a few more minutes and uh, we'll probably see these two get completely updated as well. All right, I've received a few more of these uh, alerts telling me that, uh, that my wallets have been uh, synced up. And you can see now all of the wallets are synced up. Uh, I've got the XRP wallet. It's showing me my current uh, holdings. And I've got the Cardano wallet set up and all of the transactions, right? So uh, it would be very tedious for me to go through each exchange and each wallet and try to determine, well, when did I withdraw, you know, X amount of Bitcoin from Coinbase and put it in this wallet? Uh, or when did I move some Bitcoin from my wallet back to Coinbase so that I could cash out? Uh, this will keep track of everything. So once you have uh, included your wallet and your exchange, any transfers back and forth will be treated as non-taxable events, right? Because you're just moving crypto. So you'll have both ends of the transfer included in your list of transactions. Now, once you get all of your exchanges and wallets uh, added to this interface, uh, you can uh, go over to the tax report section, right? It's going to give you some guidance if uh, it finds any discrepancies. Uh, but note that uh, any uh, fixes can be uh, ignored by allowing uh, tax reports with a zero cost basis, which is allowed by tax authorities. But this will overestimate your taxes. It's really in your best interest to track down and make sure you have every single wallet connected so that uh, there's no empty uh, transactions, right? So they don't just don't assume a zero cost basis, right? And then it gives you a breakdown of the total number of transactions, deposits, withdrawals, trades, and transfers, All right? And then there's also some help down here. If uh, you think there's some errors, they give you some links on how you deal with those. And then uh, you can download the report manually, or you can do one of their tax plans, All right? They'll recommend the best plan for you. And uh, after you've paid... It'll download the, the report directly for you and generate the tax forms necessary for filing your taxes. Keep in mind, this does not do your entire tax return. This just generates the capital gains tax forms that you're going to need to submit uh, along with your other tax forms, right? So if you have an accountant or a tax service, you can take this form and present it to your tax accountant, and he will integrate it along with the rest of your filing, right? This is only generating the capital gains forms that you need to declare your crypto capital gains or losses, right? And notice that you can choose different years, right? If you want to go back to your 2020 return, or in my case, I can go all the way back to my 2019 return, uh, you can do that as well, depending on how much history you have uh, brought in. So like I said, you want to get in as much information as possible. All of your exchanges, all of your wallets, 
so that it can give you an accurate picture of your uh, capital gains and losses for all of your crypto trades and transfers. Notice they also have some upgrades if you're a dual national or you would like an expert review. Uh, so if you feel like uh, it's more complicated uh, than you're capable of, right? Like for me, I have so many different wallets and so many different exchanges that uh, for me, it's pretty complicated. It might behoove me to go ahead and get this expert review because they are crypto tax experts. But like I said, if you're uh, just getting started and your uh, crypto uh, transactions and trades are fairly simple, like you just have one or two exchanges and maybe one wallet, then this might be an easier solution for you and cheaper than having to pay an expert to look everything over, right? Because if everything, all of your transactions are straightforward and everything's accounted for, uh, purchases, purchases and sales, then this is a great way for you to uh, generate those tax forms that you're going to need to file your taxes. Notice here uh, that they're going to include these forms. Pretty cool, safe, and secure solution for uh, generating your crypto tax forms. If you have any questions about anything I did, please feel free to throw them up in the comments, and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.